ought not be seen at this time. That's because we're going to see the game at this time. So be sure to watch Clint Eastwood in Coogan's Bluff Thursday night at 8.05 Eastern right here on your superstation WTBS. And we're about to look at the lineups for the game this evening. You see James Worthy's picture there. He did not play due to injury the first time these teams met, and he is a truly great, great player. And that's a very solid lineup for Los Angeles. Pat Riley is their head coach. There's Patrick, who just became a proud papa again the other day, a baby boy, and our congratulations to the Riley family. Chicago will line up like this. As John mentioned, Orlando Woolridge got the game-winning basket out in Los Angeles back on December 2nd. 113-112 Chicago was the final score of that game. There's Kevin Lockery, who is the head coach of the Chicago team. Boy, John, I've been coming here for a lot of years to Chicago Stadium to watch NBA basketball, and it's really great to see this, this mob here and the enthusiasm. It's like a... It's really like a playoff game. It sure is. They have sold standing room tickets for tonight. And uh, it's very exciting. The, uh, I noticed when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was introduced how excited he was. <laughs> well, let's hope that's true for Chicago. Jesse Kersey on the left, Tommy Nunez on the right. They are the officials for our game tonight. We sincerely hope that you will enjoy it. I've, it's very simplistic, but the story of who wins this game might come down to whose style of play prevails. Los Angeles wants to make it a track meet. Chicago wants to make it a very deliberate type game. Exactly. Kevin told me before the game that he is going to have his team slow the ball down, be selective, and that's what you would expect. The clear difference in these two teams is the supremacy that L.A. has at center and on the bench. They have more answers in, in tough times than Chicago does, so Chicago's margin of error is a lot slimmer. Chicago has going for him that sixth man tonight, however, with the capacity crowd. Well, let's analyze it as we go along, and we get it underway, and that's Scott with the draw, and Los Angeles will have a chance to score first, and here's Magic being played by Jordan. Worthy against Woolridge, Scott against Matthew. Magic backs in. See how tight Chicago is playing. Kareem broke away, got the perfect pass, and laid it in. Matthews heads the other way. Corzine up top trying to get Abdul Jabbar away from the hoop. Jordan has it blocked by Scott. Can Jordan get it back? Yes. Johnson inside. Jump ball tied up by Kareem. Interesting start from Michael Jordan. What a fine play by Scott. This is the second Chicago game we've had on TBS, and in the first game, it's the worst game Michael has had in his young pro career out in Denver early in the year. Byron Scott's about an inch shorter than Jordan. Boy, could he get up. And Magic heads the other way. Wes Matthews plays him this time. Big height difference. And what a pick by Rambis. And the foul will be on Wes Matthews. Well, it seemed to me that Rambis was moving when he set that pick to ring Matthews' bell. It was a major league pick. Well, he wasn't. And the crowd boos, but that's the proper call. Scott against Matthew. Magic. Rambus couldn't handle the pass, and it will belong to Chicago. Good play by Jordan, anticipating where that pass was going to go. 2 nothing, Los Angeles is our score. Matthews drops it off. Woolridge with the jump. What a great matchup. Woolridge and Worthy. They're both the same kind of player. Byron Scott. You never hear about him, but he's a good one, too. Magic. Great pass. Kareem has it blocked away by Steve Johnson. Rambus missed the tip. And a foul is called against Los Angeles on Rambus. That aggressiveness that Rambus demonstrates his a great block by Steve Johnson didn't buy the first fake and then gets up and blocks that ball but that aggressiveness is what has helped LA win 12 of their last 14 as we see Dave Corzine hit an outside jump shot and Chicago has a 4-2 lead 10 23 left Magic Johnson nope. boy did Corzine box out your bar wow that could get interesting the look that Corzine got after the fact Matthews baseline it's That's a good two. sign. 
basket. This is a bad sign <laughs> for Chicago. Kareem gets the easy basket with a quick release at 6 4. You see Matthews hit jump shots. You know Chicago could have a good night. Steve Johnson against Kurt Rambis. Corzine in the lane. Had to change it as he shot it over Kareem. Came nowhere near. And Chicago will control on the end line. Here's the play you were talking about at the other end. Now Corzine's been told tonight to play Kareem close throughout. And he certainly did there. Matthews from 24. Shot at 23. The tip won't go. Jordan tries again off balance. It's 8-4. That's why he's special. Lockery wants Corzine to play Kareem Abdul-Jabbar close wherever the ball is. His weak side, he still wants him to play it close. Kareem drew the foul as he missed. He'll shoot two. He is a 75% foul shooter on the year. Corzine's first. Second team foul. The reason he wants him to play so close, Corzine to Jabbar, is because they rotate. The Lakers rotate the ball so quickly so that if Corzine is laying off Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the ball can find its way to him very fast. So that's ultimate respect for L.A.'s passing. Corzine has got to stay on him constantly, real tight. One of the stars of airplane miss, missed the first free throw, makes the second. Makes it an 8-5 game. Matthews crosses the line against Magic Johnson. West fires again. Oops. Steve Johnson has a knock loose. Big scramble on the deck. Jump off. Wow, what an effort. Steve Johnson will jump it with Kurt Rambis. Offensive rebounding gives the team life. Johnson doesn't control it, but digs and fights and comes up with something. Johnson has a height advantage, and the tip is won by Chicago. Johnson drew the foul as he missed. I think Kareem got him. Let's see. Well, oh, they call it on Magic. His first, wise way to move foul. against the big guys go underneath, as Johnson does, although they say the foul is called by Magic slapping. We didn't see it. When you're guarded by a man so much taller, much better to go underneath and attack him. That way it's harder for him to block the ball. This guy is super key tonight, Steve Johnson. He's been getting in foul trouble early in games. As a result, he's been playing very little. Starters have two each for Chicago, and they lead in the game 10-5. 8.50 left first quarter. Worthy comes up with an errant pass. Magic tried to hit Kareem, threw it away. Jordan ahead of the pack has Woolridge. Whoop. It is 12-5. The Lakers are ice cold early. Luck to Johnson. Pat Riley wants and gets a 20-second time out here. And they have gone crazy in Chicago. They're on their feet with 8.16 remaining. And the Bulls have built a nine-point lead in the early going. And they have gone about their business, John, in fine fettle. They're really distributing that ball, playing so fine. And Michael Jordan's giving it up. See how he keeps his head up? And he finds the man who really has improved this year playing with Michael Jordan, Orlando Woolridge, a most mobile forward. This is exciting, huh? Oh, this is a good one. Los Angeles, as you see, 14 and 11 on the road, and Chicago 17 and 9 at home. The Bulls have had a lot of trouble this year with the Pacers. They've lost three but, out of four to them, two of them here. But the cat that swallowed the canary is feeling pretty smart now. <laughs> but he knows it's early. Very, very early. Rambus, boy, he works hard. He drew the foul as he got the hoop. That was an odd foul call. Seemed very sensitive uh, kind of call. 
Rambis in good position. If you get good position, sometimes good things happen to you. Where's the foul? I guess we got him on the arm. Rambis converts the three-point play. He and Kareem have the eight points scored by Los Angeles in the game. Chicago has 14. They double Jordan up top. He gives it up. Kareem had the rebound. Rambus cannot save it. Chicago has it back, and the Bulls are really scrapping hard in the early going. They're putting pressure on the boards. Even though they're not clearing the rebounds, their pressure is enabling them to get second shots. Scott all over Michael Jordan. He beats him off the dribble, gets the hook. Incredible how he goes around a good defensive player. Kareem set the pick for Magic. Eleven on the shot clock. Magic fades and fires. It won't go. Worthy battles for the rebound, but Woolrich has it. Matthews leads a one-on-two break. Try oh. He does. With the left hand and a foul. Scott with a good pass. Magic Johnson the best. The Lakers make you pay, don't they? That's four team fouls already on Chicago with 7-12 left. West Matthews doing this with one hand, cupping that ball. Magic has the free throw. He has three. 18-11 is the score. Chicago on top. Steve Johnson on the baseline has it deflected away, but the Bulls come out of there with it. Corzine. Kareem. He's got to make those. On Magic Johnson. Jordan has been playing Magic from the start of the game. That's quite a job. Pat Riley really upset on that call. He's fortunate he was not assessed the technical. Timeout is called here with 6.52 remaining in the quarter, and you score. Chicago 18, Los Angeles 11. Last night in the NBA, Boston beat Utah, as you see. They did it with Robert Perry's shirting. Well, a Cleveland team, that's two in a row over Philadelphia. George Carl's done a whale of a job there. Detroit a big win over Phoenix. And the Clippers beat San Antonio by four. Elsewhere tonight, you see the schedule. Nope, you don't. You see tomorrow's schedule. There are games tonight, too. I assume we'll get to those as we go along here. Jordan and Matthews bring it up. 18-11 is our score. Bulls have hit half their shots. Eight out of 16. Jordan. He has six. Magic. Oh, Jordan enjoyed the ride following Magic <laughs> after doing it at his end. What a matchup between those two. He, he, Magic gets a little time off, though. He doesn't have to guard Jordan when they come down at the other end. Steve Johnson up top. Jordan again. Magic goes to the other end. From 18, Magic. Tell you what, folks, you're seeing some pretty good basketball right now. During the Chicago paper today, Magic says he's going to shoot more because he helps his team more. He hit a season high the other night against Boston, 37, but he only takes 12 shots a game in 38 minutes a game of play. Steve Johnson. That came up short. Kareem the rebound. Magic. My goodness. Oh. He has nine, and he's gotten hot, and it's 22-17 with 5.30 left in the first quarter. Chicago on top. That's using your height advantage, 6-9. Woolridge made a good play to get to the ball. Look at that Rambus. Boy, he is a blue-collar type performer. Great move by Magic. Can you dribble the ball and never ever look at it like he does? Don't I enjoy watching this hometown crowd in Chicago? I enjoy looking around and seeing isolated hand clapping after that incredible play. How can you not enjoy that play by this great player? 
He sails by a bunch of folks here. Chicago has taken a 20 second timeout now. And it's a three point game, 22 19, with 5.06 remaining. John, here's some good news for you. This program is authorized under rights granted by the National Basketball Association solely for the entertainment of our audience in any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. The announcers for this game have been selected with the approval of the National Basketball Association. And for those of you who didn't get the word and tuned in to see Coogan's Bluff, the Clint Eastwood movie that was originally scheduled for this time slot, we'll have that for you Thursday at 8.05. We do have Pat Riley, who somebody voted one of the world's 10, ten sexiest, sexiest men in America. America. And a new father. <laughs> All is not lost. Thanks. Orlando Woolridge. The Bulls have suddenly cooled off. Boy, that Rambus does a very quiet good job. L.A. is on an 8-2 to two run in the last minute and a half. Woolridge knocked it free. Good effort, but the Lakers inbound on the side. And we haven't even seen McAdoo yet. <laughs> That's right. Worthy has been quiet and still is. Corzine the rebound. Wes Matthews in a hurry. Good move. A lot of guys going coast to coast in this game. As I said, Kevin wanted to slow the ball up tonight. <laughs> he did, but his team is so pumped up. I think he's just said, go ahead, it's working. Matthews was in the bathroom when that speech was given. <laughs> Scott. Byron Scott out of Arizona State, his first two points of the night. 24 21 the score. Corzine, double team. Matthews thought about it. Woolridge on the baseline. Kareem, good outlet pass. Three on two, Laker break. Worthy. Boy, did you see how he used his body to shield the ball and make the basket? Nicely done. 24-23, Chicago. When you hear athletes referred to as athletes or ball players, that's an example. He can do so many things with his body. Corzine, that goes. He has to stay out at that foul line to the circle and do that all night. And he can do it. Magic for Kareem and a foul. What a pass. Second foul on Jordan. That could be an item. You know, look at this play. I really think, I was trying to analyze before the game with Pat Riley, why is Kareem playing so much better? That play could be an example. Playing with someone who passes the ball like that can really make you love the game a little bit more, too, you know? I would think so. Jordan leaves. Steve Johnson is out of the game. Quinton Daly checks in. Scott comes out of there with a the ball. Sidney Green is also in the game for Chicago. There's the skyhook. Kareem has nine. Magic has 11. And the Lakers suddenly have the lead, 27-26. See what happens. Jordan went out with a one-point lead. Let's see how long he stays out now. I'm sure he's out just to catch his breath. And he's got the two fouls. Daly. It won't go, but a foul is called on Scott. And the Lakers want and get a timeout as Scott picks up his first foul. Third team foul on his team. Timeout on the floor. 2.51 remaining first quarter. And the Lakers lead it by one in a barn burner. Elsewhere in the NBA tonight, Milwaukee plays at New York. Golden State is at Atlanta. Dallas plays at Houston and Portland at Kansas City. And we'll try to keep you up with those games as we go along here this evening. Quentin Daly at the line. He's an 80% foul shooter, and he can shoot the Bulls back into the lead. John Andres, Skip Carey with you from Chicago Stadium. And we sincerely hope you're enjoying the action. mentioned at the outset, Quinton Daly is one of the three constants on this team, along with Will Ridge and Michael Jordan. Dynamite off the bench. Third leading score in the league off the bench. We've got a tie game. Michael Cooper has checked in for Los Angeles. 
as Magic brings it up against Wes Matthews, who tries to draw an offensive foul, but cannot. <laughs> Is he energetic or what? Oh, he make coffee nervous. <laughs> Cooper, good luck to Rambus. Easy late. Boy, they're an unselfish team. The teams that win big are. Matthews heads the other way. Lakers by two. Daly against Cooper. He's double teamed. Didn't nobody went for the fake. Illegal defense is called against Los Angeles. It's on Kurt Rambis. Bob McAdoo checks in. Rambis out. Not because he had an illegal defense called against him. And Woolridge inbounds on the side. Just unbelievable to come in off the bench with a Bob McAdoo. Yeah. Three time scoring champion in the NBA. And of course, they've lost Jamal Wilkes for the year. Another outstanding performance. Two minutes up to the quarter. Corzine. Green. Foul. Two shots. M McAdoo. Uh, McAdoo is picks first. it up. Nice look by Corzine as Green got good position on McAdoo. This young man had a, had a start in the first game after the All-Star game against Detroit last week. And boy, did he give Kevin Lockery a good answer. 16 points, 15 rebounds. He made most good use of that start time he got. Los Angeles by one and with the ball with a minute 50 remaining in our first period. Kareem on the base. Great pass to Cooper. He fumbled it, but recovered in the air and shot the layup. And right now, Los Angeles is doing virtually nothing but shooting layups. Taylor yeah, wasn't aggressive enough in attacking Kareem. Made it easy for him to dish the ball up. Woolridge with a dandy move. Got it up there with the left hand. He has six. Worthy. Another layup. No question that Chicago is being exploited on their defense in the transition game. They're just not doing it good enough. Corzine up top. Wes Matthews thought about it. Now he's going to do it. Yes. Wes has eight. It's a one-point game with a minute left. Magic close up on the little guy. Gets the hoop and draws the foul. Magic is so cruel. <laughs> he just used used his bulk and his size and he kept the ball. It's like he wanted to torture Matthews. You keep on me, I'm gonna kill you. Take just hang in here. <laughs> Kareem out for a rest. Mitch Kupchak checks in as Magic adds his 14th point of the proceedings. And the Lakers lead by four with 52 seconds remaining in the quarter. Quentin Daly handles it and shoots it over Cooper. Oh. Kevin Lockery said that's our weakness, outside shooting. But when Daly's in the game, that picture changes. Magic, another layup. This one for McAdoo. He is amazing, that Magic Johnson, isn't he? How many layups have they shot in this quarter? He hypnotizes the, the other defenders on the team, and they, they start watching him. And, and boy, as soon as they do, he senses that he's being watched. This is the ball up. He keeps everybody on his team working because they know they're going to get the ball. Daly, oh. great shot. With eight seconds left in the quarter. He threw up sort of a prayer, but he had an answer. Boy, he's, he's giving Michael Jordan a nice rest. Here comes Magic with five, four, three, two, one. It oh! buzzer stick around I oh. think we're in for quite a night oh. at the end of one we're tied at 38 working out here's the only thing Magic Johnson has done wrong all night right there he had his pocket picked by Quentin Daly who came off the bench and in about two minutes scored seven points and at the buzzer, got the game tied up at 38. And at the conclusion of the game, we'll select the light beer, most valuable player of the game. 
And in conjunction with the award, Turner Broadcasting and Light Beer from Miller will present a check for $500 to the National Multiple Sclerosis Foundation in that player's name. Chicago will inbound as the second period gets underway. You look at the scoring leader. Elsewhere in the second period, Atlanta leads Golden State 41-37. The Bucks and Knicks in the second period tied at 41. Funny to think that Quentin Dale is keeping Jordan on the bench now, but that's what's going on. Will Ridge double teamed on the baseline. Shoots it in desperation. Great shot. He couldn't find anybody to pass to, so faded away and drilled it. Fabulous shot. Ball away jumper. 6-9. McAdoo. Sidney Green with a rebound. If this was a prize fight, you'd wonder if either guy could finish in the late rounds. They have thrown every bolt in their arsenal at one another. Corzine. Cooper immediately finds Magic Johnson. And again, he threw it away. This time, he got it back. Cooper is alone. He's not known for his outside shooting, but you've got to respect him. They did not that time, and he drilled it. Green from 18, at 17, and Kupchak the rebound. Boy, well, Mitch has battled back for leg and knee problems that would have destroyed a lesser man. Worthy got his own rebound. Bulls are getting exploited in the center position now, even though Abdul-Jabbar is out. Corzine has to be tired, I think. But he should be able to hold his own now with uh, Mitch Kupchak. Good luck. Woolridge. Oh. Got it. His patience got him that hoop. If he goes up right away, he gets it rejected. Yes. We're tied at 42 with 10.05. Cooper finds Kupchak all by himself. Now, Wes Matthews and Magic Johnson with some extracurricular activity. Yes, Percy takes care of that. Magic being bothered by the aggressiveness of Wes Matthews. Who will be on the bench and out of the league if he doesn't play that way. That's right. <laughs> he has been a couple of times out of the league. Daly. What a spectacular effort Clinton Daly has given his team. We're tied at 44. Cooper. Oh, he's red hot. Boy, Jabbar's on the bench, and now they're hitting from the outside. I mean, are they following the perfect pattern of playing this game? Matthew, high arc. Corzine, down goes Kupchak. What a block by McAdoo. That won't go. McAdoo, the rebound. Cooper finds Magic. It's three on. <laughs> oh. Magic Johnson is a one-man clinic. It's just like the All-Star game, only it was Ralph Sampson there. Daly finally misses one. Green blocked away. Daly again. Off balance. Threw the foul as he missed. It's on Magic Johnson. Magic can't believe it. I thought he was not guilty either, but it's his third foul, and that is a big item in the game. We may see him no more till the second half. Here's the break a moment ago. <laughs> Magic the hypnotist. He does it with his eyes. He just stares yeah, you, you right you out the You watch his eyes, you're in big trouble. <laughs> He never looks at the ball, and he never looks at who he's <laughs> passing to. Now, how do you defend against that? Now, when he learns how to smile when he's doing that, Skip, he'll really have it down. <laughs> if he thinks of his paycheck, he would be. <laughs> Daly will shoot, too. A lot of changes now for both teams. Now, this is interesting. Daly and Jordan together in the backcourt. That's something that hasn't worked that successfully for this team because they're both offensive players. Kareem is on the bench. Worthy is on the bench. Magic is on the bench. And 
Los Angeles leads it 48 46. Caldwell Jones has checked into the game for Chicago. McAdoo works against Caldwell. Sits the jump and drilled it. Caldwell Jones working his way back into shape after coming off that broken hand only a game or so ago. Brad Higgins in the game for Chicago as well. Handles the ball now. Here's Daly. He's had a great night. He's fouled as he missed. Mike McGee, who just checked in for Los Angeles, picks up the foul. Here's Murphy. You know how you can tell Daly is such a great shooter. He takes shots that when he's in the act of taking them sometimes they look bad because they're forced and they're from a long distance. But when that ball hits the rim that's the announcement that he's a heck of a shooter because it hits that rim and kisses it softly and most of the time it goes in. He has 12 points in about that many minutes maybe not even that many minutes in the game. Closer. That one won't go for it. Lakers by three, 50-47. McAdoo down under. Briggs, shot, missed. And traveling is called. See if Spriggs is all right. Larry landed on his wrist and came up favoring it, but he heads on down the floor. I think he's hurting a little bit. Spriggs out of Howard University. Jordan on the base, hangs in the air, and a loose ball foul will be called on Cooper. Now on Michael Cooper, his first third team foul. His first, that's three team fouls already for Los Angeles. <laughs> Daly finds Green, who's posted up. He got the hoop. Terrific pass by Quentin Daly. Cooper against Jordan. McAdoo can't handle the pass. Green can. Chicago has it back. They can take the lead with a hoop here. 7-13 left. Kareem about to come back to work for Los Angeles. A pretty lengthy rest for him. Uh, Jordan. Michael has 10. Foul on Higgins at the other end. Mike McGee will be at the line when play resumes. Right now, a timeout is called by the Bulls. They lead it by one with 6.54 remaining in the half. Here's the way the standings look going into tonight's activity. Now, Washington Club is a surprise to me that they haven't gotten it going a little bit better than they have at this point. We just got Cliff Robinson uh, back, and he's... That he's can't hurt them a lot, yes. Denver clings to that two-game lead. That's a big surprise. Doug Moe has to be in the running for Coach of the Year, honor. He's got a contract, good contract talks coming out of uh, Denver for him. And the Lakers are breezing. Sam Bowie making some moves, too. He's had some very good games lately. Those are the lover bulls. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. And McGee will go to the line to shoot two. Sometimes the things you think you should just keep these up. McGee makes the first free throw and tries again. Chicago's on a nine to two tear right now. McGee, his first two points. Caldwell Jones, you're not going to shoot from out there. Kareem, you know that. Jordan with the foul. I think it'll be on Spriggs. Let's see. It is. Jordan cannot be contained by one man. And most teams have been double teaming him, although L.A. has not really done that tonight. So when he goes one-on-one -on -one with the ball, you know that he's going to get something as he just did then. Is 
Jordan six is 12th point. I got a kick out of how he expressed his frustration after the All-Star game when he was not. He did not show what he really is made of. The next game against Detroit, 49 and 15 rebounds. Chicago goes to their trap. McAdoo with a rebound. That won't go. Spriggs, that won't go. That won't go, and Chicago finally has the basketball. Oh. And they miss connections on the break. I think Kevin changed his mind at the start of this game because his idea of slowing the tempo they get it, right, right. Either that or he just can't control the guys. You know, they feel they can go. Kevin is flexible as an ex-player. He knows the feeling. Let's see what we got. Illegal defense against Chicago. Sidney Green got buzzed. Well, Magic Johnson may be averaging 12 shots a game, but when Kevin Lockery played, <laughs> he averaged a lot more <laughs> shots than that. We had Earl the Pearl together. McGee, yes. You see the score, and we've got 542 left in the half. John Andre, Skip Carey with you from a sold-out Chicago stadium. Mr. Higgins, Professor Higgins misses. Oh, my goodness. Michael, Michael Jordan, Jordan has 14. Oh gosh. I don't know what Higgins' uh, problem was on that shot. I guess it was a pass. Yeah, you sort of shot that ball like my fair lady. <laughs> Caldwell Jones picks up his first foul. never see a player shoot from straight out and miss everything like he did. Caldwell Jones playing a little physical here. McAdoo from 17. Look at the arc on his shot. And Sidney Green was right up on him. That's the mark of a great shooter and great concentration when you can drill him with a guy hanging in your wheelhouse. Lakers by one with 450. Daly. Oh. And McGee was all over him talking about great shooters. Quentin Daly with 14. Jordan has that number. Orlando Woolridge has 10. They lead Chicago. Kareem has handled the ball very little in this game. He didn't get where he wanted to be, and he traveled. I like that move, though. He might have created that. But he took a little two-step, and the ball goes back to Chicago. They lead by one. 4.22 left. Daly. Kareem finally out of there with the rebound. Cooper, great pass. McGee. McGee with six. Four minutes left. Los Angeles by one. Woolridge. Nope. Kareem is ahead of the field. Cooper saw him, then crumbled it away, and Chicago gets it back. The Bucks by eight over the Knicks tonight. Atlanta by six. Some of the What's amazing here, Skip, is that L.A. has scored so many shots on fast breaks and layups, which normally kill you mentally. It's amazing is that the Bulls are where they are. They're right, right here. Daly, he's cooled off. Finally. Cooper against Stewart. He almost lost. Kareem against Caldwell Jones. Good pass, McGee the layup. Boy, the layup, they have shot. That's disgraceful for Chicago, though. I mean, he sneaked in behind four, four defenders. And that's going to get Wes Matthews right back into the first Everybody seat. knows Kareem can pass the ball, and he will pass the ball in those situations. There's Cooper with those quick hands at his. Green with the turnaround won't go. Kareem can't control it. Woolridge 
done. A whistle, it won't go, and a foul on Los Angeles. Kareem is called for the foul. It is his first. The timeout is called here. With 2.43 left in the half, it's a three-point Los Angeles lead. After tonight's game on the Superstation, Clint Eastwood has a choice to make. His love or his life in The Beguiled. Seems like a relatively easy choice to make. <laughs> but we'll We'll see how it works out right after the game here on WTBS. Something very interesting, Skip. Points in the paint in that uh, red area there on both ends of the court. L.A., as usual, leading. But Chicago doing well, too. L.A., 31 points in the paint. Chicago, 22. Which shows you that L.A. is being exploited also internally on defense. It's a one-point Los Angeles game. Woolrich has 12. Magic Johnson will have missed about eight and a half minutes of the second quarter with the three fouls. Byron Scott back in the game. Kareem draws the crowd. Scott all by himself. That's for three, and he got him. He just came back in the game and hit one from 26 feet. He's got five. And Los Angeles leads by four. Woolridge can't handle the Jordan pass. Los Angeles in a hurry, as they almost always are. <laughs> Worthy can't unload at the moment. Six on the shot clock. Three on the shot clock. Worthy, it won't go. Kareem, the rebound. Yes, and a foul on Caldwell Jones. And Caldwell Jones had position. So what? Uh, You're right. There's a great possession. <laughs> well, all-time score in NBA history showing no signs of weakness. The Lakers have their biggest lead. It is seven points, 66-59, 140 left in the half. Woolridge works on Worthy, who fouled it. Woolridge angry at himself that he didn't escape. Get in there for stuff. Dave Corzine comes in to lean on Kareem for a while, and Caldwell Jones goes out. Corzine also will help a lot if he can do his patented jump shooting. He's been quiet tonight. He has but four points. Woolridge now has 13. He's 3 of 3 from the foul line. Well, you're telling me Kareem has been special kind of jumping rope to help his physical condition? Yes, a uh, rope called heavy rope. Be perfect which, uh, for me, wouldn't it? Pat Riley. <laughs> Pat Riley said he, Kareem feels his upper body, uh, his arms are much stronger having used it in the offseason. I think he also used it during the season. Weighs about five pounds, the one he uses, so six. Lakers are really running the clock here. It's good and a foul. Cooper has had an excellent shooting night. Lakers have have turned this game into a slowdown affair on their own without Magic in there this quarter. Well, this is why this team is doing so well now. They have so many answers, so many people they go to. They have had no let-ups in this game. The best Chicago has done is stay with them, but Chicago has cooled off, shooting under 40% here in the second quarter, and L.A.'s in the 60s. Cooper has 11 points. Michael Jordan now with three fouls. And Wes Matthews crosses the line with a minute eight remaining, and the Lakers at top it by eight points. Worthy with great anticipation, printed his man, intercepted the pass. Scott from 14. Boy, they are cooking. Corzine elected not to put his hands up, too. That might have affected Scott. Got to work on defense. A 10-point Laker game. And they've done it without Magic Johnson in the second quarter. 
you're right. They just got an awful lot of weapons. Daly has cooled off. Steve Johnson can't control it. Good effort by Byron Scott. He came up empty. And the Bulls inbound on the end line. 40 seconds left in the half. Daly. Boy, is he going cold. Funny how it'll happen. You can be so hot and then you can't hit a bull in the posterior with a base fiddle. 28 seconds left. I often say that. <laughs> well, not maybe exactly those words. <laughs> 10 on the shot clock. They go to Kareem. Back to Cooper and another layup. Bulls haven't scored a field goal in four minutes. They'll now play for the final shot, but they're suddenly down by 12 here. Five, four, and Rambus a foul. His second. His second in the penalty. Steve Johnson, a 69% foul shooter. He's two of two from the line tonight. Has four points. Seventy three sixty three were they from midcourt one second it's good if it goes he didn't miss by that much and we're at halftime very good second quarter very good first half for the Los Angeles Lakers they lead it by 10 at the halftime break. about this beer that Brother Hollowell's been buying for the lodge? This expensive brew, Meister Brow? According to the guys down to the plant, it's not expensive. Just tastes expensive. Oh? So? so what's Hollowell doing with all the money he claims to spend on beer? Yeah. Well, let's just ask him. Hollowell? Hey, where's Hollowell? Hey, Hollowell. Hi, Hollowell. Mm. Meister Brow, it only tastes expensive. Hey, could I tap? 73-63, Los Angeles are scored at halftime. John, when you shoot 67% and a half, you figure to be ahead, don't you? Well, by more than 10, actually. Yeah. Chicago has shot 50%, which isn't bad, but this Laker team is special. And that's why they can do what they're doing. They've scored 20 points off the fast break. And they've gotten great help off the bench, Skip. They've outscored Chicago by 12 off the bench. I mean, they're deep. We knew that coming in. Kevin Lockery knew it coming in, and they wear you down with their style, and they've done that in the first half. Chicago got a little cold in that second quarter, and that was it. L.A. just kept rolling along. Now, the Bulls are in a little bit of a pickle. They've only gotten scoring out of their main three, as we knew coming in. So they've got to get Corzine into the action more, and Michael Jordan has to get a little more explosive. The Lakers held him down pretty well, I'd say, in the first half. You think they'll run as much as they did in the first half, the Bulls, I mean? Well, I, it paid for them when they were able to do it. But I think where they ran into problems, as Kevin told me before the game, he said, we're not a good outside shooting team. And when they got into trouble was when they were missing from the outside. That's when it turned for them or against them. Okay, and we'll be back with the play-by-play -play story on quarter number three right after this. Well, the horn has sounded, and the third quarter is about to get underway here. There you see the stats. Boy, that shooting percentage is, is really something. Bulls have had twice as many chances at the free throw line, have made eight more points there, and that statistic has kept them around. The shooting statistics for L.A. reflects layups. They score most of their points inside and close, and that's why they're so high. And it reflects their running game and their style of play. They're doing their thing. Meanwhile, that person had seven basketballs going at once <laughs> during the <laughs> halftime break. There goes Magic Johnson to the hole. That guy just won a trip to anywhere in the continental U.S by sinking a half-court shot, by the way. Not bad duty. For a packed house. Where would you go if you had won that trip? 
I'm just looking at Michael Jordan here. You're not going to answer my question. <laughs> I'll tell you where I'd go. I'd go to... Uh, You'd go to Brooklyn, I know. I'd go to Palm Springs. Palm Springs? That's <laughs> third quarter begins there's a very very old baseball announcer who may be watching our game tonight Tom Segway Segway fellow named Kerry <laughs> daddy to you daddy to me 73 <laughs> 63 Chicago trails by 10 I bet he wishes he was here if he is here. Matthews drills it it's been a pleasant surprise offensively four out of eight in the first half in the field for Matthews Byron Scott heads the other way. Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan play with three fouls each. Kareem goes to the baseline. How many of those has he made in his great career? 75-65. A very quiet 14 points for Abdul-Jabbar. Worthy knocked it loose. Kareem fronts Corzine. He can't handle the ball at all. Matthews tries again. Not this time. Magic one on four. And he shoots a layup anyway. Out of sight move. Chicago looked like a bunch of cigar store Indians on that play. They all admired the dribbling artistry of Magic Johnson at 77-65. Scott's playing Jordan very well. Woolrich from 17 got it. 77 67 our score. Kareem. Boham. He is really something. And you're right, when you say Hoham, he does make it look easy. He's one of these expressionless guys, but he works very hard at both ends of the floor and has throughout his career. Good look to Matthews by Steve Johnson. Michael Jordan being played very tight. Scott denying the ball to him. It's the best way to stop someone. Don't let him get the ball. 4-3. Scott is 2 out of 2 in that department. Scott now with 10 points. Wes Matthews, by the way, has 12. His season high is 14. So... Big night for West. You have Jordan can't get the ball. Tough to score without it. Woolridge dribbles it out of bounds. The good Laker defense pays off. And with a 13-point lead, they have the ball again. Jordan's not the kind of player that gets picks. He has to get the ball his own self, and he's having a tough time now. He could use some picks to shake his defender, Scott, off him. Worthy. Steve Johnson the rebound. They want to run. Jordan has it in his hands now. Matthews on the run, nowhere near. Willridge fumbled it away, but a foul is called on Scott. Boy, Matthews would be a big time player if he could hit that jump shot a little more than he does. Yeah, that is his weakness oh. because defensively he'll drive you to distraction. Oh, what energy he has. Steve Johnson got it. He has eight. Eighty-two, seventy-one. Our score. There's the double team. A little bit. Kareem, bingo. I think our old buddy Eddie Doucette coined the phrase "sky hook." Uh, that's the apt description of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's hook shot. Imagine if he could get a royalty on that. Steve Johnson playing like a real big man. 84-73, Los Angeles. They have the ball with 8-10 left third quarter. Scott Bingo. Oh. On the move. He has 12. 86-73. Jordan has to be really frustrated, Skip. I mean, he's going to want to go now. Look at Kareem help out on it. Woo! It won't count. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Magic in a hurry as the crowd boos. He 
Magic is called for an offensive foul. If it's on Magic, it's his fourth. The look you're getting now is a prior move by Steve Johnson where he was called for walking. Michael Cooper will get Magic Johnson. And the foul trouble gets him to the pines again. It's 86-73, Los Angeles. Corzine knocked away by Rambus. He had the foul to do it. It's a tough foul if you're Rambus, but the reason it's called as much as your, as your position than anything. He was behind him. When you're behind and reach. Yeah, you're dead. I mean, you're... And officials will assume a foul. They say they don't, but they do. That is the fifth point of the night for Dave Corzine. Eighty-six, seventy-four, Los Angeles. Hey. Corzine's really the perfect backup center, and this team needs him as a starter. Cooper has it stolen by Matthews. He should get a layup. He does. What a layup by the midget on the court, huh? Who's the foul going to be on? <laughs> Steve Johnson is on the deck and hurting, and he is called for the foul. He's okay. He's in great pain, but he's okay. <laughs> he doesn't know he's okay. He's but... accelerate to the hoop now. And he just barely got it in there. Two-handed stuff over the big man. Steve Johnson doesn't know he's okay, but he is. <laughs> and James Worthy will inbound on the sideline. That stuff was over James Worthy. It's a nine-point Los Angeles game. Cooper had a big first half, but he's still hot. I mean, if you're Chicago, you're hoping Los Angeles is forced to outside shooting. But Cooper's been magnificent with his outside shot. And he's stuff. the guy you hope takes the shot, but he keeps right. carrying it tonight. Well, I'll tell you. Wolverine almost walked and got the hoop. Scott gets it right back. Junior Magic, huh? And Chicago calls a timeout. You never hear of Byron Scott, but when you see him, he can get it done. 6.34 left third quarter. The Lakers on top by 11. Don't forget, because of tonight's game, Coogan's Bluff will not be seen at this time. Well, that's pretty obvious since we're not seeing it. But you can see it Thursday night at 8.05 Eastern Time right here on WTBS. Clint Eastwood stars in Coogan's Bluff, and he gave us his permission because he wanted to see the Lakers and Bulls play. Here's some amazing numbers here. Cooper, 6 for 6 in the first half, 1 for 1 now, 7 for 7, Byron Scott. Six for seven, including two three-pointers. And I'm not knocking Cooper, but he's a 44% field goal shooter, the worst on the Laker team. Tonight, he's been perfect. Defense is normally his stock and trade, illegal defense. It's technical time. Rambus is called for it. Let's just call a timeout here as far as Chicago's offense. I mean, Michael Jordan, who is the main man for this team, no question about it, is having a lot of trouble getting the basketball and that's Byron Scott he is doing it Jordan misses the technical attempt he had 14 in the first half but has been very quiet here in quarter number three I mean, most teams have to double team to contain him one man is doing it here you see him how he's playing without the ball whoops he draws a crowd and misses the shot and Cooper the rebound Resting on offense, just now crossing the timeline. Eight on the shot clock. He drew the foul as he missed. Jordan was there, so was Corzine. It'll be the fourth on Jordan. So like Magic, Jordan has four fouls. 
Jordan, an 86% free throw shooter, he just missed the technical attempt, and that might be because he's not handling the ball. Well, he's trying to help him as best he can. Kevin Lockery now it appears he's going to leave him in, but now we see Quentin Daly getting ready. Kareem now with 19. He is three out of five from the foul line. Tough decision now. Kevin's got to hope Daly can do what he did in the second quarter and shoot Chicago back into this game. By the way, we should point out in NBA news of the day, John Lucas back with the Houston yes. Rockets. Signed a contract for the remainder of this year plus two years. Quentin Daly had to change it, made it anyway. That's a great shot. Well, let's hope John's straightened out for good this time. He's a fine young man who's had an awful lot of problems. Well, his team sure missed his 16 a game and nine assists when he went out in early December. Knocked away by Corzine. Here comes Quentin Daly. And Corzine. That's blocked away by Cooper. Boy, he is, he is some athlete. Corzine. He was, he just, oh gosh, it's so frustrating. Why didn't he jam that baby down, you know? He floated up like he was all alone. No way Cooper should block this shot. Daly in a mess. Matthews by himself. Yes. Kareem at the other end, but they can't get him the ball. Matthews with 16. Scott. Will he be three for three? He will. That's in three-point attack. Boy, those will break your heart, too. He's got 17 now. Who needs Magic Johnson? I mean, look at these guys posting them right, right along. 95-83 with 440, third quarter. Worthy played good defense. Woolridge made it anyway. To me, Woolridge doesn't get the ball much. One of the league's leading scorers, you know? Well, I think it's the same point you made about Jordan. Uh, give the Lakers some credit for that. But he's not getting the intensity Jordan gets. For Rambus, foul. Sidney Green picks up his first. Our next NBA action on TBS will be Friday night, Detroit and Philadelphia at 7.35 Eastern Time. Rick Barry, Bill Russell will be with you. Byron Scott, Byron Scott again. He is, he is just unbelievable. A 12-point quarter, 19 in the game. Sunday, Boston at Indiana at 4.15 Eastern Time. Larry Bird in his home state on Sunday. Scott with a steal from Matthew. And a foul. Matthews gambled that he could prevent the basket. He could not. And Byron Scott has been the guy that has been a one-man wrecking crew for the Lakers. He has taken the breath out of this team. Look at the anticipating, closing that passing lane. And now how he converts. Left hand. Byron Scott has been one complete superlative in every aspect of this game. I think you're tipping your hand as to the Miller <laughs> player of the game. It looks, but a long way to go in this one. 22 for oh. Byron Scott. Well, that means I have to disagree with you, even if I agree. <laughs> to keep my record perfect. I'm, I'm leaning a little, Skip. Leaning a little. 185. Corzine pressured by Abdul. No goaltending. Ball goes to Chicago. Fans are frustrated by Cuisine's inability to finish this move off. Quentin Daly. Look at Cooper play him. Cuisine finally gets a shot away. It comes to no good. Look at McAdoo battle. Here they come again. <laughs> Kareem has it knocked away. Matt 
Matthews for Corzine. Oh. That's blocked. Oh. He gets it back. And a foul. They're cheering. There might be some jeering in there, too, though. A timeout is called by Los Angeles. Persistence paid off. McAdoo, the foul. And with 2.47 left in the third period, the Lakers are up top by 13. I gave you some bad information. I apologize. Friday night's game, Detroit at Philadelphia at 7.05 with Rick Berry and Bill Russell. And that will be followed by the mobile track meet. Dave Corzine now with nine points. And it is a 12-point game and a foul on Green. Incidentally, this game was not on our original schedule, and it's been an enjoyable one for you. We've added some other games as well. The Detroit Pistons will play here in Chicago on March 12th. That's the next game John and I will have for you. We've added the Celtics and Bullets on March 23rd. And on the 30th of March, the 76ers here against the Bulls. Some remarkable shooting skip in the third quarter. L.A. has made 11 of 12 field goal attempts. They must be over, well, they are over 70% for the night. And Chicago is shooting 11 for 18, which is 61%. Not good enough. 102-88, our score with 235 left third quarter. Boy, Los Angeles plays defense well. Daly misses. Cooper comes up limping, but forces it up the floor anyway. He's hurting a little bit. They find Scott. It's knocked free by Matthews. Woolrich to Matthews. Great oh, shot. Wow. Matthews, a season high 18. What a spectacular shot. Two minutes left, third quarter. Worthy. Oh, they call an offensive foul on Worthy. He went into the defensive man's territory. Worthy. It's third. One fake, two fakes. Now he's going to go in. Good call by Tommy Nunez. Wes Matthews heads the other way. It's 102-90. The Bulls are not out of this thing. Woolridge double team finds Green. Finds Woolridge. I like Sidney Green giving that ball right back. 22 for Woolridge. It's a 10-point game. Ronnie Lester, the former Bull, about to get into the Los Angeles scheme of things. Kareem double team. There's the sky hook. It won't go. First one, he's missed. When you shoot 90% in a quarter and you can't pull away, you really wonder what's in store for you before the night is over. That's been the story with the Lakers here. Caldwell Jones is in. David Greenwood gets into the game for the first time for Chicago. Green and Corzine out. Greenwood missed the first 10 games of the year. There's a final. Milwaukee beating the Knicks. Another one. Hawks. Slip by Golden State. The Warriors playing a little better. They've had a disastrous year. How is Dallas containing Houston like they are? Woolridge again. And they're back in business. 102-94. 50 seconds left. Third quarter. McAdoo. He has eight. Daly on the attack. Over Scott. He forced it, missed it. Caldwell Jones kept it alive for Greenwood. It's on the deck. Daly fires it. That's a 10, 11 to 4 run now for the Bulls. 104 96. Lester will run the clock. They'll have to shoot it with about four seconds left in the period. We'll give you the time on the shot clock, which is down to eight. Five. Two. Scott didn't get it away, and the ball goes back to Chicago with three seconds left. 
Michael Jordan will get into the game. Caldwell Jones will go out just for this final fling. The Lakers drop back, except Scott plays daily. Jordan will shoot it from three-point range. At the end of three, Los Angeles by eight. Bulls outscored them 33-31 in the third period to move to within eight. And in the NBA, that's close enough. You'd rather be ahead, of course, but it looked like midway through that third quarter that it was history. Byron Scott got so red hot, it looked like he was going to make it a 20-25 point lead, but no longer. The Lakers have appeared invincible throughout much of this game. I mean, like, no way they can be beaten, and the Bulls are knocking on the door. You've got to give them all kinds of credit because they're not getting super performance really out of Michael Jordan. I mean, let's focus on that. Jordan's not doing it like he has in most games. And it's not a question of him not doing it. It's really more of a factor of the defense. It's being taken from him. So let's see how he responds. Do you have any questions for that lady? That's syndicated columnist Ann Lander. <laughs> She's the one that said cuddling. Well, let's not even <laughs> deal with that. They go to their double team, do the Bulls. Rambus is back in there, so is the Magic Man. Jordan plays Johnson. For three, again, not this time. He finally missed one. And now Chicago can move to within six. Remember, the Bulls won in the Forum back in December by a point. Great defense again. Daly's getting hot, though. You can't double Jordan if Daly gets hot. And I like Jordan, too, for not forcing. It's important to this team that he doesn't force. The Lakers' lead was 15. It's now 6. McAdoo. Caldwell Jones got him a two-shot opportunity. When Magic Johnson left the game, it was 86-73, so it was right after that that Chicago got back into it. Let's watch closely now. Does Caldwell Jones foul him? Technically, the hand is part, part of, of the, the ball. Yes, but there might have been some risk yeah. there. You have to have bionic eyes to tell the difference anyway. McAdoo has his ninth point. A capacity crowd has enjoyed themselves in Chicago tonight. 106-98 with 11 minutes left. Here comes Mr. Jordan. He hasn't had a shot, I don't believe, in this half. Three-second violation. Jordan fooled Greenwood, who thought a shot was forthcoming. Rambus made a heck of a play, too, denying that shot attempt. One oh six ninety eight our score with 10.36 left. Worthy. Couldn't buy it. Caldwell Jones. Here come the Bulls again. Daly. Yes, sir. Whoop. He was on. He was off. And now he is hot. He's got 22. It's a six-point game. How long before we see Kareem skip, huh? This trip down the floor might determine that. McAdoo all by himself. That's oh, a layup for him. Get leaving him open like that. 108, 100. Jordan goes baseline. Daly again. He can't miss. What a sequence. He has all six of their points in the fourth quarter. 108, 102, Lakers. Magic. That's a two point shot. He doesn't get any. It's on Rambus. You know, I thought that last shot attempt by Jordan was spectacular, Skip. It was blocked by Worthy, but the shot that he 
that even attempted was spectacular. Michael Cooper into the game. James Worthy goes out. Here comes Kareem right now. Look at that. Let me tell you what Pat Riley's thinking and talking to him, to him before the game is daily shows why he's been so valuable tonight. Pat Riley is thinking about catching Philadelphia and Boston for the best record. Sure. He remembers last year, game seven in Boston. He wants it back in L.A. He's five and a half games away from Boston and four from Philly. The frustration for the first time showed in Michael Jordan there. Ill-advised drive to the hoop and his fifth foul. Finish the point. Riley wants the best record in the league so he can enjoy the home court advantage in the playoffs. Magic goes baseball. What a pass. McGee. No whistle. Chicago heads the other way. Willerich has it blocked away. They're going to call Golden. Second toughest call in basketball after the block and charge is goaltending. Was the ball on the way down is the question when it was blocked. Looked no. like it was on the way up. A big break for Chicago. McAdoo, no. Jump off. Oh, my goodness. They're on their feet in Chicago Stadium in dismay. What a great rebound by Woolridge. Quick whistle. Matthews gets Jordan, who leaves with a five foul. Ball wasn't thrown very well, but Chicago wins the draw. He's red hot. Quick daily. No. Magic the other way. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Kareem and a foul. Not to be denied. He has 22. I wonder if everybody chipped in about a, a dollar each to get another quarter here. <laughs> I want five quarters. Look at this move by Kareem. We may have that anyway. <laughs> uh, a dollar each wouldn't be enough. Three dollars each. Inflation. 110, 104, 818 left. Woolridge made a great move and a foul. He beat a double team, drew the foul, and got the hoop. Boy, he put special stuff on that move. anybody's ball game a big comeback by Chicago Kareem no tip no Chicago. so important to this team he's their best rebounder Chicago can move to within one now that big crowd is back in the game what was that call I didn't see it I'll be honest with you but the turnover hurts Los Angeles, hurts Chicago. Must have turned it over, palmed it. That's our guest, Cooper at the other end. They look to Kareem, can't get him the ball yet. They do now, he shoots his jumper. So he's cooled off and another foul against Los Angeles. I think on McGee, let's see. Yeah. into this crowd in Chicago. They're right back in the ballgame. 7.30 left and your score. Lakers 110. Chicago 107. That turnover we missed the last time down was a travel on Orlando Woolridge. We thank referee Jesse Kersey for helping us out. 
19,052 paid. You see the standing room fans crammed into the historic Chicago Stadium. Bulls are really doing the job on the boards here in the fourth quarter. Nine to one, they're out rebounding the Lakers. They can move to within a point. Kareem blocked it, but a foul is called. You see how Woolridge is playing since he was denied that rebound when they called it a jump ball? I mean, he's a warrior now. He can move his team to within one. Give the Bulls credit for giving him the ball now, too. He can get things done. This is all happening with the great Jordan on the bench. What a good sign for this team. Very important that they don't depend on him all the time. This would be a big win for them. Get them straight oh, away. That's huge. six out of seven. A heavy yoke to carry. Well, oddly enough, Skip, as we saw before the game, when they met last time, Chicago had lost something like seven out of nine. Yeah. Six out of seven. Something very similar situation. Were they? Somebody's got to get a hot for the Lakers, and nobody has here lately, oh. but there's magic. He decided to post up, play a little center. He's got 18. Memories of him doing that. His first year in the NBA. Matthews, front court. A four-point Laker lead. It was 15 at one point. Daly. Oh, oh he's unreal. Daly has 26. A two-point Los Angeles game. They can't shake the Bulls. Greenwood's doing a heck of a job on Worthy, who's been quiet, hasn't he? Foul Caldwell Jones. And Worthy, we haven't even noticed in a while. That's five on Caldwell Jones and limited playing time. Byron Scott back into the game for Los Angeles. McGee up. Who's Scott going to pick on now? <laughs> I would guess Daly, but we'll see. The most logical person. Kareem, they're trying to foul Caldwell out of the game. All of a sudden, that hook won't go for Abdul Jabbar. And now Chicago can tie it with 6.05 left. Let's all watch it together. not a play. No. <laughs> the least likely guy to take the shot tied the game. This has got to shake L.A.'s confidence. Kareem stays cold. Now the Bulls can take the lead. You believe this? The Lakers have eight points in six and a half minutes here in the fourth quarter. Woolridge gets it back. He loses it. Recover. One step. At the buzzer. It's still alive. Caldwell Jones, and they start over. They just got the shot away in time. And thus have the ball back. 451. Matthew. Los Angeles. Caldwell Jones touched it last. All right, Kevin. Time for Jordan. <laughs> Pat Riley. Good old reliable number 52 coming up here. Well, he called the right play. Cooper was lonesome. Total breakdown by Chicago. Lakers by two. Cooper with 17. Two away from his season's out. 114-112. They want Matthews to shoot it. He obliges and misses. Here comes Magic. Kareem goes the other way. Well, when the right-handed hook won't go, he goes to the left. Yeah, A 20 second timeout by Chicago. I'm just thirsting to see this guy come out here now, and Kevin just gave him the nod. 
We've got 3.54 remaining in our game as Jordan will return and Matthews will depart for Chicago. Boy, you, I'll tell you what, you got to give the Bulls credit. It looked like it was history in the third quarter when they got down 15, but they've clawed back. No way anyone thought that they could come back like this. I mean, I just can't believe how they've done it. What guts, what tenacity, what effort they've played with. And the Lakers haven't been exactly chopped liver either. It's been a good one. Caldwell Jones, David Greenwood, Jordan, Daly, and Woolridge for Chicago Michael against Jordan, Scott Cooper, Worthy, Irvin Johnson, and Kareem Abdul Jabbar for Los Angeles. L.A. frontline has a 12 point superiority, 49 37 over Chicago in this game. The starters. Can they get him unleashed? Not yet. Good pass. Greenwood fumbled away a layup, then the foul on Kareem. Talking to Magic Johnson before the game, I said, how do you feel about Michael Jordan? What's, what's so special about him? He said his ability to hang in the air, how he can stay up, he said it gives him that third dimension. There we saw an example of it. He was up in the air. Looked like that L.A. had completely bottled him up, but his ability to hang gave him that chance to find the open man. Jordan is pointless in the second half. Still his team has come roaring back. Greenwood has played only in the fourth quarter and has his first point of the night. It's a three-point Los Angeles game. And that's the way it stays. Oh, look at the action of Jafar. I can't believe there's no foul. Yeah, Cole Cole Jones. Jones and Kareem really having at it. Worthy in a pickle. Good pass and a foul. If it's Caldwell Jones, it's Sayonara. It is and it is. So Jones fouls out with two points. And he fouls out with 322 left. His points aren't the issue. He appears to play Kareem better than does Corzine. Well, for one thing, he's a couple of inches bigger. He's a veteran. He knows how to use his body with Kareem, and he did a good job. Kareem with 25. A four-point Los Angeles lead. Three fifteen left. Kevin got a lot more out of Colwell Jones, and I'm sure he expected he's missed so many games with the broken wrist. Cooper shadows Jordan. Daly against Scott. Great move. Kareem blocked it. Ahead of the pack. Magic against Woolrich. He took the foul. Two shots. Deliberate foul. Good foul by Woolridge and a good way to do it. He took the foul and then held on to Johnson to keep him from getting hurt. Kevin Lockery argues about it, but I can't understand for the life of me why. A new rule in the NBA this year. If you foul from behind on a breakaway, he's on a breakaway. Now, how can you say that's not deliberate? That's an intentional foul. And that's two shots. It's not a dirty foul, and it paid off because he missed one of the free throws. It's Woolridge. Now they go to the scorer's table to check things over. Maybe they didn't call it a two shot. Woolridge demonstrating to Tommy Nunez exactly what he did. They did call it a two-shot foul. And now Los Angeles has apparently called a timeout. Timeout on the floor with 2.59 remaining. And with the Lakers at the line to shoot one and up by four. What's the difference? America's Game NBA Basketball is brought to you in part by Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant, the wide stick gives you man-size protection against perspiration, wetness, and odor. Let the wide stick give you the edge. Speed stick, antiperspirant by Menon. Magic Johnson may miss both free throws, but now the Lakers get the ball back. That's part of that rule, too, on the deliberate foul. The reason for this, what they call breakaway foul, is that the official made the judgment that the defensive player, in this case, Woolridge, made no attempt to play the ball. What he did was wrap his arms around Magic. 
and an 84 percent free throw shooter just missed two so the Lakers lead stays at four they run some clock here but a long way to go in this 248 left Kareem again no the sky hook has deserted it Greenwood's been important you know he just entered the game in the fourth quarter also coming off injury very important now oh. Jordan blocked by Kareem and he comes out of there with the ball and Jordan can't catch a cold here what helping defense the Lakers have played on Michael Jordan I don't recall their defense being this potent any time recently what respect he's got Kareem tries it again nothing wrong with that one they're going to him every time down it's a six point game it's like they say down the stretch okay big fella go do it Skip how many does Jordan have when you get a chance to look daily and this is he has 14 all in the first half Greenwood an easy hoop. his first of the night he has three it's 119 150 a minute 40 Great pick by Kareem and the basket to Worthy. Give and go. So lovely. 121, 115, a minute 25. Good pass, Jordan, but traveling is called on Greenwood. He was surprised by the ball. They have done some job on Michael Jordan. Oh. Two games we've seen Michael Jordan on TBS. He had a tough one in Denver early in the season, Skip, you might recall. He's liable to tell us to <laughs> bug off. <laughs> Magic content to run some clock. Eight, now seven on the shot clock. Give and go. Oh, what a shot. That's incredible. Wow, that's remarkable. Absolutely unbelievable. He did that, but he really didn't because it's not possible. <laughs> I mean, I know we all saw it, but he did not do that. Because a human being can't. I hope we get to see that one again when we come back. 102 left, Lakers by eight. There you go. <laughs> 102 remaining, it's 123, 115. We figured out what Magic Johnson did on that last play. I like your I like what you just said, Skip. He should get an assist because he passed the ball to himself in midair and then made the layup. <laughs> That's right. First time in the history of the sport. Look at this. This is, is this did not happen is because an it's impossible. And a basket. <laughs> 102 remaining, 123, 115. We're having a nightly argument about the Miller player of the game. We'll keep you posted. Well, that didn't help. Jordan caught the inbounds pass out of bounds, and the Bulls have self-destructed in the closing minutes. Hey, Jordan's going to want to stay here after. He's going to be looking for people to play some free on free with, you know, <laughs> so he can get his confidence back. No whistle as Worthy missed. I'll tell you this, I bet he drives home alone. He's had enough people around him all night. Kareem picks up the foul. It's bonus time. 42 seconds left. It has taken such a great team effort to contain Michael Jordan. His first point of the second half. And we're not knocking the kid. I, oh. For a rookie, he showed remarkable poise. I think he's really only taken one bad shot throughout this. That's right. He's tenacious defense. He's a great player, and we just didn't see it tonight because of how L.A. played him. Worthy gives it off to Byron Scott, and the clock ticks. It's a six-point game. Not over yet in this league. I've got to say this, though, Skip. I don't think there are more than three teams in the league that have the personnel to play him as well as they did because when he's airborne the Lakers have a Kareem or a Worthy who can go up and meet him up there. Ten on the shot clock. Twenty two in the game. Whoa magic. Worthy has twelve and the lights are out for the Bulls. 125 117. Daily fades. That won't go. Eight 
seconds left. Cooper. People around the country who didn't watch are going to pick up the paper tomorrow and think it was a Laker route, and it's not that way. Jordan, 4-3, got none, and it's over. Boy, what a job the Lakers did. Their defense is very, very impressive. 127-117 the huh? final. Totals and highlights after this. Our light beer and Turner Broadcasting most valuable player of the game is Byron Scott, who had a heck of a night. He was three out of four in three-point plays, had 22 points, was part of that big defensive effort that shut down.